to the book, or to the epistle of Rome, to Romans, the eighth chapter. <clears throat> I have one verse to start off with. I know there'll be many more, but just one verse. Eighth chapter of Romans. The book of Romans has been called one of Paul's greatest writings, greatest explanations of the gospel. And it is so deep and, and so powerful. And it, it, you can't, you can't, uh, you know, just exhaust it. There's so much there. In the eighth chapter especially, and, and you want to study the sixth and the seventh chapter, I, I'd encourage you to do that. It talks about the operation and working of the Holy Spirit. And, and in this verse is before me, it, it just impresses me. The 37th verse. Talking about all the things <clears throat> that can separate us from the love of God. Without reading all those, I just want to go to the one verse. It says, nay, or no, in all these things. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In all these things, whatever comes in your life, we are more than conquerors through him, Jesus Christ, praise God, that loved us. And he, to me, this is a case for the Holy Spirit. More than conquerors, a case for the Holy Spirit. Jesus said when in John's uh, gospel, he says, I go away, but I send another. If I could write, read, if I could fill in between the lines, you don't know what you're going to face. You don't know how life is going to be. You don't know what the enemy is going to try and do to you. You have no clue how the enemy will lay in wait well, he will try to destroy you. You don't know, but praise God, I'm going to send another comforter. One called alongside to help who will guide you and lead you and help you and protect you. And direct your path, praise God. Oh Lord, help us this morning. I've said many times that we're not able to live the life by ourselves. We're not able, with our good intentions with our willpower, with our character, we're not able to leave, live the life. It's impossible. Well, you don't know who I am. I, I have a, 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 an iron will. I'm strong. Well, that may be. But you have an enemy who is much more powerful than you, who knows how to wear you out and drag you down. And you and I are not able, praise God, to live it. And, and today, you know, we hear the talk, well, you've got to stand on your own feet, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. You've got the power. You can exercise in the faith. No, that's, that's wonderful. Do the best you can. But brother and sister, you and I need power from on high. We need strength from the Lord, praise God, to live the life. And Jesus provided the whole plan of salvation is so beautiful when you think about it in, in simplified form, just a, a, a synopsis that, that Jesus came to pay the price of your sin and my sin. Sin separated us from God from the very beginning. Sin came in the world and separated us from God. The first parent sinned. And sin came in and with sin came all the, the ills that befall mankind. First two brothers, if one killed the other, right out of the box, sin. But Jesus came in due time and paid the price on the cross for your sin and my sin. Sin demanded a, demanded a blood sacrifice and Jesus came, the perfect Lamb of God, sinless. His blood covered your sin, my sin, the sin of this world. And it's still effective today. It will never lose its power. Oh, praise the Lord. But Jesus said, I have to go. I can't stay. I'm only here with you for a time to complete the mission 
that the Father sent me on, but I will send another, praise God. I will send the Holy Ghost that will abide with you forever, who will dwell within you, praise God. He's not a liquid or a gas. He's the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, who lives inside of the believer. Oh, praise God. And he gives us power. He, Jesus said to tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That's the power we need, praise God, in our lives. You and I want to be successful in this life? Yes, we do. Not only materially and socially and whatever, but most of all spiritually. We want to please the Lord, praise God, and, and the Holy Spirit is there to help us. Well, Brother Ron, how do you get off telling us we're not able to do it? How, how, what, what gives you the authority to, to say that to us? Are you putting me down? Are you, are you putting me down? And I, I can't live the life for Christ? Yes, I'm not putting you down. I'm telling you what the Word of God says. If you read in the seventh chapter, Paul, one of the greatest apostles that lived, experienced the struggle. He says, pardon me, let me go to the right place here. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You see, it's the sin nature within us. Somewhere else he says, I delight in thy law. You may delight in that law, but the carnal nature within you delights in breaking that law. Oh Lord, now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity into the law of sin which is in my members. What is he saying here? If you read earlier in the chapter 2, he says, you know, before the law, before I, the revelation, before I understood sin, I was fine. Everything was okay. I did my thing. But once I made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, once I, came, I committed my life to him, once I gave him my heart, once I said, I want to follow him, oh, then the problem started. <clears throat> because the old man, the old nature, the carnal man said, oh, no, I'm, I'm not going to be subject to this. Oh, no, I, I want to do my thing. And the war began within us, a spiritual warfare that we talk about. Praise God, Paul tells us, he said, who can deliver me? Who can deliver me? Praise God, oh wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. And he goes on in the 8th chapter, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the form, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The law of the spirit of life, what is that? It's the regulating, activating power and life of the Holy Spirit that is operating in our hearts. It's the Holy Spirit operation in our hearts that transforms us, that changes us 
something divine takes place. It, something happened to us when the Holy Spirit comes in, when the baptism takes over, when, when the Holy Spirit comes and indwells us, something happens, praise God. It, it is a divine operation that takes place and we're changed. It says we're raised in newness of life. Behold, all things become new. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus because we have a new outlook. We have a, a, a new desire. We, everything becomes different, praise God. The things that we enjoyed, the things that we thought were important, all of a sudden they're changed, praise God. It, it's no longer those things are important. It's serving Christ and feeling that presence of the Lord, having that assurance and that hope in our hearts, that desire to serve Him. Oh, praise the Lord. Giving us the power to overcome. Praise God. Let me finish a couple more verses and I'm going to close. And the righteousness for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity, deep-rooted hatred against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. I want to stop right there. Before the Holy Spirit came in, we had one choice. It was the carnal things. Oh, we tried to live good lives. We tried to be good citizens. But the carnal nature was there and caused us to do things displeasing to God. And there was no ability, no ability. The brother talked about living in guilt in his testimony. And that's how Christians today, some Christians live. It's, I got to do something right. I, I, I got to. I gotta live right for a while. I gotta, I gotta toe the line and uh, so God will forgive me. No, that that's not it. That's 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 not it. It's not works of the flesh, the law that's gonna save you. The law is perfect, but you can't fulfill the law because we're imperfect. We don't have the power. But it's the grace of God, the mercy of God, the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from every sin. It's accepting. It's accepting the atonement of his blood. Accepting salvation as a free gift. It's nothing you earn. You didn't earn it. I can't earn it. We can't do enough right. It's impossible. But it is a free gift of God. And he gives us the power and ability through the Holy Spirit to live the life. To make the right decisions. To turn away from our anger. To turn away from our lust. To turn away from uh, addictions. Turn away from, from desires that are evil. To turn away from those things. How does it happen? The Holy Spirit, the operating power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, gives us the ability to do that, praise God. He gives us the faith to believe. When the enemy comes in the midnight hour and says, oh, it's looking so dark, you're, you're going to perish. It, it, the word is that the, the doctor is going to come back with bad news. Oh, you might as well give up. The Holy Spirit says, wait a minute. That's not the Lord. When things look all negative, when things are going in the wrong direction, well, Lord, it can't happen. Oh, yes, it can. Because the Holy Spirit, the spiritual dynamo will come alongside and say, trust in God. We get an inkling of the power in Paul's prayer in Ephesians. His prayers there. He says, 
that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Your understanding is going to be opened to the will of God, to the riches of his glory, the hope of his calling, praise God, and the exceeding greatness of his power. Oh Lord, would you help us this morning, oh God. Help us, Lord, to allow the Spirit of God to move inside of us. Praise the Lord. In Romans, it says, No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So there is an option. You don't have to walk after the Spirit. You can do your own thing. It's a choice. We can be in Christ Jesus. That's not going to be a successful life. And walk after the flesh. It's going to lead to destruction. That's what the word of God says. We just read it. But thank God. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to live the life. That's what we need today in individuals in the church. We need the power of God to have his way. When you're tempted to cheat on a test. Anybody been tempted to cheat on a test? Holy Spirit, the truth teller. No, you don't want to do that. Don't do it. When you're tempted to lose your temper. When you're tempted to get very angry. The Holy Spirit is right there. When the enemy would come at you through individuals maybe to put you down, to discourage you, the Holy Spirit is right there. When the Lord has called you to step up and do what he wants you to do, whether it's to testify in the service, to lift a prayer, to step out in some form of ministry. The enemy is right there. Oh, no, you're not. No, don't you dare do that. You're not worthy. Who do you think you are? Remember how you were last week? Remember how you behaved? Look at your past. You got no business thinking that. The Holy Spirit says, Go on. Move forward. The enemy wants you to forget that you put it all under the blood of Jesus and that it's been forgiven. The memory is still there, but the sin is gone. Praise the Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you. Lord, help us. Paul said it. The things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do. Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of sin, of flesh? Jesus Christ, through the Spirit of Christ that resides in us. Oh, Lord, do we need the Holy Spirit in our lives? Absolutely. The resounding answer is absolutely we need him to guide us and direct us, to give us understanding and wisdom, discernment, and the ability to live a life. You look at folks in the congregation that have gone through some serious trials. I mean, very difficult trials. Maybe even lost a loved one or, or gone through some personal physical issues. And you look at what sustained them. What was it? Because they were such strong people? Because their DNA was special? Maybe we ought to study their DNA and find out what made them tick. You think that had anything to do with it? No, it didn't. It was the Holy Spirit around them and the prayers of the saints that sustained them through it all. Was God's power. Paul said it. In me and my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Nothing. That's not a put down, that's reality. So 
Somewhere in the, in the epistles, I believe it says the righteousness of man is as a filthy rag before the Lord. The righteousness of man is as a filthy rag before the Lord. We sing that chorus, I forgot the name of the song. He is all my righteousness, I stand complete in him and worship him. Praise the Lord this morning. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. My brother and sister, that power is available to every one of us here this morning. That word more than conquerors, it's one word in the Greek. Hooper Nikonum. The hooper means over and above. In Latin, it's super. And Nikonum means victors or conquerors. Paul is literally, literally, literally saying that instead of believers being victims in a fallen world in Christ, we are over and above victors, super victors. Instead of barely getting by in life's difficulties, difficult experiences, in and through Christ, we are overwhelming conquerors. Do you feel like a conqueror this morning? Quite frankly, sometimes I don't. I feel like a pinball in a pinball machine. I'm bouncing back and forth, being beat up by the devil. You ever felt like that? Just me, huh? He knows how to work you over. Remember who you are. Remember who you are. Not that we, oh, look, no. Remember who you are, who Christ says you are. What's the song, at least, that you, your group sang? I am what I am because he says who I am. Do I have that right? Amen. Say that real loud one, one, one more time. Amen. The I am is telling you who you are. You are precious in his sight. You are precious in his sight. Hallelujah. He's given you power to overcome through the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be successful. He wants you to be an overcomer, a victor. Not a victim. Many people today claim victimhood. Oh, I'm, look at me, poor me. No. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done. Praise God. I don't have everything I, I want, but I have everything I need. Praise God. The enemy says, oh, poor you. Look at you. You're serving the Lord. No, you're praying. What's hey, Everything going swell? No, it's not. Look, look, look. Everything's negative. Rebuke him. Reach out and praise, defy those chains, and they will fall in Jesus' name. Praise God. We are more than conquerors through Christ in his spirit. I pray the Holy Spirit just encourage you this morning to launch out. You know, it says to be led by the Spirit. To be led means we have to follow. And to follow means we have to submit and surrender to his direction. You see, that's the problem with mankind. That's the problem with the human nature. I want to do what I want to do. I don't want anybody telling me what to do. That's the old man, the old nature. Don't tell me what to do. Hey, it's my life. No, I want to submit to Jesus Christ. I want to surrender to the Holy Spirit. I want him to lead me and guide me because I can't maneuver on my own. I know I won't make it. I know I'll go off the path. But oh, if I follow him, praise God, if I allow the Spirit of God to move through me, if I allow him to direct me, it's going to be victory, praise God. Well, Brother Ron, will there be some problems along the way? You betcha. You see, this old nature is not going to lay down dead. 
this old nature is going to raise its ugly head every once in a while and say, hey, I'm in control. You, you think it's good to lose your temper once in a while and just blast somebody? Don't you feel like that at the time? Before it happens, you feel like, man, if I could just, I really like to say what I want to say to that person. And maybe sometimes it does happen. And what happens when you get done? You feel rotten. Because you got anger and bitterness in your heart. And the Lord is talking, and the Lord is saying, nah, that's not the way. That's not what I called you to do. It's the grace of God that he gives us. Praise the Lord. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Praise God. Lord, would you give us that mentality the enemy wants to just keep us in that mindset that, you know, we're victims. Oh, Lord, no, we're not victims. And I say that to myself as much as I say it to you. Lord, help me. Help me. Help us together. May the Lord encourage you this morning. May his name be praised.